You might say this space looks a little bit weird and you might be right, but uh, let me tell you this review uh, will be the one with the most surprising outcome ever on this channel, at least from my point of view. So uh, let's get started. <laughs> Well, this already started out kinda good for a base with a white painted fingerboard. Am I right? Of course I am. I think this sounded freaking cool and before all you gear nerds ask what we used for the sound, it was the Electro Harmonix B filter, uh, this one here. However, let's have a look at the base. Uh, this is the Reverse MI5 from Musicbox, a company specialized in building special bases for music specialists and I think that's really special. In other words, uh, they build everything but uh, generic and ordinary instruments and I'm a huge fan and I already own three of them. Here's the first one, the Space Ranger. It's a short scale bass uh, with uh, flat one strings on it and uh, it just sounds fabulous for all kind of vintage sounds and it has this beautiful very long horn. Here's the next one, the Space Ranger XL, uh, basically the same bass, but uh, it's a lot bigger and it has a little bit of air inside. And here's number three, the Space Cadet 12, uh, which is a golden sparkly 12 string bass, which absolutely sounds amazing. Um, check the demo somewhere up here. So uh, cheers to number four. Specs are simple and pretty straightforward. Uh, the body is made from mahogany and colored in this beautiful surf green white finish. Uh, the neck is made from maple and glued uh, to the body. The fingerboard has 20 jumbo threads and is also made from maple, uh, which you can see here on the side. They left this natural almost like a binding. Uh, the front, however, is yeah kept in this white high gloss finish, which uh, I don't want to say I hate it, but it's definitely a little bit pointless, I guess. But on the other hand, it's totally worth it because it looks amazing. Let's take it just like that. Um, as long for me as a player, as long as it doesn't get in my way playing up and down the neck, I don't really care. Um, as long as it sounds good, everything's fine. And if Jens Ritter can do it, um, Matt from Music Box can do it too, I guess. The color matching headstock is angled a little bit, as you can see here, uh, to make sure the strings have enough uh, pressure on the nut, which is uh, perfect and amazing. And uh, the width up here is uh, 43 millimeters, which is honestly a little bit wide, but I have to say this bass uh, still plays very, very comfortable. Musicbox is using locking tuners here and the bridge is surprisingly normal for their designs. It's a straightforward uh, high mass 2D bridge design. And now let's finally get to the interesting part, the things that René and myself freaked out about when we recorded the sound samples. The pickups. Uh, of course they look dope with their matching white covers, which is really cool, but that's not really what I want to talk about right now, because they sound really good and very special. Um, the first one here is, as you can see, very close to the neck, and it gives you a bit of these uh, Gibson EBO or EB3 vibes, kind of. Uh, but they're not as fat as the original Gibson basses, they are tighter, and I think the sound that they provide is actually much more usable, as at least for me in the studio circumstances. Uh, because these super fat sounds are often hard to record and hard to put in the mix, and uh, with these it actually works much better and uh, if you like these nice vintage mellow sounds just use the passive tone control here and you will definitely love it. Thank you. 
At this point, I should mention that I only used very little uh, EQ and compression and other plugins for all the sound samples in this video. It's not that I didn't try or didn't want to, because that's actually the most fun part about my job here. But yeah, it turned out there's not so much room for improvement with these sounds. When you uh, record the space through a decent mic preamp directly in the interface, what you get is just almost perfect right away. And uh, this is amazing. The bridge pickup sits uh, suspiciously is that a word? I don't know. Uh, in the classic Music Man position. Um, of course, it's not uh, a fat humbucker, it's just a soap bar, so it doesn't have this fat, punchy, uh, classic Stingray sound. But uh, I think this actually sounds great here and uh, especially very usable for uh, pick bass sounds. <laughs> This is a classical uh, volume volume tone configuration here, which I love and I definitely prefer this, especially on these kind of bases over the modern uh, volume blend uh, tone configuration. Uh, in this way, you can achieve a wider range of different blended pickup sounds. Why is this bass so special and why my claim at the beginning of the video that this is the review with the most surprising outcome or whatever? Um, that's very easy explained. Uh, every time uh, I uh, base from Music Box in the States is uh, shipping to my studio here in Germany, I get some pictures beforehand and I guess same as you, I see them and I think like, uh, wh why? <laughs> why and, and, and how and, and, and what's wrong with you? And uh, I guess that's the same reaction for most people when they see these bases. But I'm in the fortunate situation that I actually get to play them. And uh, so I can tell you that these bases always sound absolutely amazing. I know they look like toys and, and, and weird designs for weird people who just want to play something that looks very special and unorthodox or whatever. Um, but these are actually really well designed and thought out concepts. Um, this bass, for example, uh, as I said, uh, they, they used some some techniques and some, some uh, specifications from very well-known vintage basses like the position here for this, the classical Gibson thing or they this time they, they went with a little bit of a Music Man theme and a Fender type of bridge and all this kind of stuff. Ma Ma Maple Fingerboard is something new to me from Music Box and um, you could think that this is just stuff thrown together to, to cover a range of whatever sounds, but um, when you get to play this, you will be absolutely amazed how well it all sounds together. This is, they spend, I guess, countless days and weeks of designing these bases and to find unit and to find the right parts and the right woods and the right the right pickups um, to to make it yeah work really well together. And uh, Matt Eichen, who is the owner of Music Box, is actually a, a huge collector of all these weird vintage bases from the 50s, 60s, 70s, especially European designs from Italy, uh, the the Eastern the Eastern Bloc, and uh, some some weird companies were also in the Netherlands, and they made all these spacey weird designs for I don't know for what kind of people used to play them but uh, I guess it doesn't matter because Matt bought them all he has a, a huge collection and I guess he's using all these bases to analyze what these companies did and to get inspired to build these kind of bases and these are definitely not toys even if they look like one but these are very well thought out and I'm super surprised uh, what they come up with. And uh, what's really cool about this bass is uh, that I would say it's the most out of the box that bass that I've ever played, which means this delivers a bunch of sounds that I haven't heard from any other bass so far. And um, when you're in the studio and uh, you have finished your recordings for all your songs or whatever, and, and there's a bridge or maybe a song left where you and the producer think there should be something special that we want to have a sound that that creates some attention and, and makes the listener like think what's that that sounds different but cool and uh, this is a bass that you would use in such a situation and you would find a really cool sound for this right away because um, it has a lot of different sounds but they all sound good and all sound very different to anything that's generic and heard a million times on a million different records and that's what I love about this bass. It has a lot of special sounds but they all sound really good and are very usable which is not always the case with weird basses. But it will definitely take you out of your regular comfort zone and I think this is actually the best thing about this bass. Uh, the neck is wide and it feels and it looks different and you will definitely play other stuff than you usually play and 
this is yeah this is a huge inspiration for me here in the studio and uh, uh, speaking of inspiration uh, for the next sound sample we used uh, my trusty Maxon FL301 uh, flanger which sounds amazing and uh, yeah uh, while René was playing I felt like I want to turn the knobs and and, and, and change some settings during the recording I, I don't know <laughs> I guess this is how inspiration works sometimes uh, it sounds a little bit weird but uh, yeah I just call it the trunk flangey whatever sound enjoy <laughs> I guess that's all that I can say about this bass right now. It's super weird, but in the most lovely way possible. And uh, I'm very happy about it. And I'm very happy that we'll, we will now have it here at the studio and we'll be able to use it for some new pedal demos and stuff like this, because um, it's a lot of fun to use it and we will definitely do that. Um, if all that sounds interesting to you, uh, I should mention that this is a limited edition and they make only four different finishes and with four pieces each. So if you want to grab one of those, uh, better be quick because they might be gone in a couple of days or whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I did making it. Uh, and yeah, I guess see you next time. Bye.